Every time a new year rolls around, you hear the conversation going again about resolutions. Uh, your new year's resolution. It, it just seems like a, a very natural time uh, to look back on the past year and, and think about the things that, that you did well that year and think about the things that you, you didn't do so well that year. And, and it seems like a good fresh start point where you can look forward and say, here's the things that I wanna keep doing from the year before. And here's the things that I, I want to change in this coming year. A good time to add disciplines, habits, those kinds of things. I have to admit that I, I somewhat enjoy making resolutions. I enjoy uh, trying to hold myself to something, adding disciplines, adding habits, uh, evaluating some things that I want to get rid of, and, and then writing it down so that at the end of the year I can um, evaluate was I successful in in adding that discipline or or not. Um, if you're the kind of person to, to make a resolution, can I ask you, have you considered your spiritual life when it comes to making your resolutions for this, this coming year? And if you haven't, can I encourage you to consider your spiritual life in that conversation? Because you think about some of the resolutions that you've, you've made in different areas of your life. If you were disciplined in carrying out those things, um, I, I would assume that you would become markedly better in different areas of your life. I, I would assume that, that those things would benefit you in some way, shape, or form, that you will be a healthier version of yourself, that you will be your best version of your, yourself. Well, if that's what can happen, if you remain disciplined in something, then how much more beneficial uh, would it be if, if the Holy Spirit who is in you is working through the means of grace that he has given you. Essentially what I'm asking you is if, if you have uh, the power to change some of your habits in your life and, and, and change some things for the better in your life, well then how much more power does the Holy Spirit have to do those things? Uh, because we know that we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit at our baptism, that the Holy Spirit lives within us and that he is working uh, within us. And that spirit is, is continuing to grow our faith within us as we're connected to the means of grace. Uh, Timothy was a young pastor that the Apostle Paul was writing to. He wrote two letters to Timothy. And in his second letter, he is encouraging Timothy uh, to, to fan the flame of the Holy Spirit that was given to him. Uh, listen to these words here. Uh, from verses 6 and 7 of chapter 1. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Fan into flame uh, the gift of the, the Holy Spirit. You have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, and so if we, are to, if we are to take Paul's encouragement to Timothy and apply it to ourselves, how can we ignite the, the flame of the Spirit that God has given to us in our baptism? Well, of course, we go to the places where God says His power resides, where the Holy Spirit is promised to work through the Word and through the sacraments. So if, if you're formulating a resolution for 2024, a great resolution uh, would be to, to be around the Word more, to make worship a priority uh, in your life, and to make uh, your own personal Bible reading a priority in your life, to devote some time to that because that's where the Holy Spirit is going to work. And this is a spirit, not of timidity, but of power, right? He's going to work through that. And to make a, a resolution that you're going to receive the sacrament. Uh, uh, as, as often as possible in, the, in this coming year um, to, to make taking the Lord's Supper um, a, a priority in your life, that would be a great way to fan that flame of the Holy Spirit who is a spirit of power, not a spirit of timidity. The other two he said, he said, uh, but, a, but this is a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. This spirit works powerfully through the means of grace. This is also a spirit of, of love. That this spirit, as 
our, our, as the Spirit works within us, that we are moved to love God and to love our neighbor. So in, in another one of, my, one of our resolutions for 2024, uh, can we resolve to, to love God and to love our, our neighbor? Now, Jesus says that this is the summary of the law. And, and finally, of self-discipline. Uh, maybe there are some, some great self-discipline, some, some discipline areas of your life that you can work into your, your life in 2024 that will benefit you spiritually. But no matter what your resolution is uh, for 2024, uh, remember to take with you the, the power that God has given to us, mentioned at the beginning, the, the Word of God and the sacraments. And be sure to, to take God's forgiveness and grace with you through those resolutions too. Um, that, that His grace is the thing that empowers us and that His forgiveness is always there for us. That if we fall short on our resolutions, that He is there to forgive us and pick us up again uh, so that we can keep that we can keep going. And He is the one that, that carries us through those those things anyways. Uh, may God bless you as you consider your spiritual goals for 2024. I pray that you, you consider them. I pray that you walk through it with God's grace and forgiveness, trusting that the Holy Spirit will empower you to do these things um, through His grace.